and welcome to Church Beyond Walls. We are excited to be here another Sunday. We are excited that you could join us on this morning as we lift up the marvelous name of Jesus. Come on with us as we pray. Come on with us as we lift, lift his name on high as we bless his name.
you are glad to be here. I don't know about you, but look, check this out. I'm grateful for God's presence. I'm grateful that he woke me up this morning. I'm grateful that he started me on my way. It, listen, it could have been another way. Amen. So grateful for your presence on today. I know we want to get a head start for us. This is Super Bowl Sunday. I'm not really tripping because my team ain't playing. Uh, but listen, if y'all want to be here, that's good. That's good. And when, when Dallas, when Dallas, look, when Dallas, when Dallas wins the Super Bowl, I said when, not if, but when Dallas, and they told me, look, this is what we said, we them boys, we them boys. It's called DC4L, DC for life, for life. My daughter said, uh-uh. Listen, my family is dysfunctional because two of my family members, they're Steeler fans, right? This is my son is a Steeler fan, my daughter is a Steeler fan, and then my wife is really dysfunctional because she's a Las Vegas Raiders fan. But, but, and it's like, and I saw that, I was like, this lady then brought Raiders up here. And hey, and y'all already know when Raiders show up to anything, they tell gay parties are gangster. They like, they crack heads, they go in. So it's like, look. You, but, but I'll be like this, hey, hey brother, you know, I'll be like, come, come, to, come to Dallas, come to our field and see me crack some eggs. We will give you a concuss, concussion or something. We'll break you. Look, we'll break you off something, Robert. Don't come to my team. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. Don't, come. Don't let me be the coach. I, listen, I got all the good plays. Anyways, let's have church. So glad for you to be here. So my family's dysfunctional. Don't trip. Yours is too. Yours is too. You know, I'm eyes ain't the only one. We still being set free. We still being delivered. But needless to say, I'm glad for your presence here on today. Uh, we, we won't be before you very long. We want to see what God has to say. Well, uh, listen, I am grateful for the Lord's presence. Grateful that you came. And don't let this be your last time. Come back again. Come back again. Um. I um, talk too much, and so I assume that uh, <laughs> someone was our relatives because they have the same last name. Yeah. I, I, did you know that my wife's last name is the same as your last name? I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm glad my wife is not running from the, the CIA or I mean, you, could be, you could be undercover. And then, family. Yeah, yeah but, right, 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 right. I was like, wait a minute, her last name is Bill. So, wow, 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 wow. Praise God, praise God. But like I said, I'm glad you wasn't running from nobody and I didn't dime you out. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to put no money on your books. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll come visit you and get a hug and a kiss. You know, you know what I'm just saying? I'm your book. I'm on your book. <laughs> Look, so let's go to the Word of God. I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians. We started a series last week, and we called it The Love Project, The Love Project. And uh, it's a great series. Last week, we talked about loving our Heavenly Father. This week, we're we, we, we moving it further, and we're going to talk about love in the home, love, loving our families. We talked about loving our Heavenly Father. This week, we're talking about loving uh, our family, loving our families. In our families, we have uh, not only husbands and wives, but we do have children. And so this is going to be a two-part in the series because we're going to talk about loving each other and then loving y'all. Y'all is the kids, right? Until we can love each other good, we can't really love the kids right. So uh, we want to go to Ephesians. We want to read verses uh, four, chapter 4, verse 32. And then we're going to do 5, 1 through 2. We're going to jump down and read verse 18. And then we're going to jump down and read further. So we got a lot of reading to do. So we're going to read what we're going to deal with on today. And we'll pick it up next week and go down further. Uh, I hope you all can hear me well. I don't want to be too loud, but I do want to be very clear on what I am saying. 
So glad to see you this this morning. Your eyebrows is looking real good. You you, you beat your eyebrows. You beat them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let my daughter see that because my daughter my daughter is about to be sixteen in less than a month, and she already told me that a part of her her beauty package is she gonna get her nails done, and she says she's gonna get her eyebrows. I said you can get your eyebrows done at twenty one. I will I will pay for one. She said, Dad, I'm becoming a young lady. I'm a young woman. I said, Hold up. Hold up, I'm still your dad. I let you know when you, but my hurting her and her mother already been worked it out. I guess I just gotta go with it. Right? So, hey, uh 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 uh, uh brother, brother, I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a piece. So I can keep I'm I'm I, I, I got I, I, I got hey. <laughs> You got me? I hey, cause look. We gonna do we gonna do like they did on on the on, yeah on bad boy hey we bad we bad cowboys for life we gonna roll up and give them all hey don't be looking at my daughter too hard cause hey hey we we will go in we will go in hey I got family I got we got people we got people we got people true hey 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 just y'all see see hey Samara's like what hold up hey Uncle Dino said give him the word. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians 4.32. Y'all forgive me for, for having too much fun. I'm sorry. I just like to have fun. If I can't have fun, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. So um, y'all have to be patient with me. Uh, I don't like to. I, I'm best. I'm at my best when I'm having fun and enjoying life. So that's what I that's what I like to do. I want to be reading from the NLT. I want to give you a few seconds to go to um, the um, Ephesians 4, 32, and then we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of reading um, and just see what God is saying. See what God is saying. Because his words is the words that change our lives. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says this. I'm going to read Ephesians 4.32. Uh, it says, how about we back up to Ephesians 4.31 and then read a couple of verses. It says this. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words. He's not only talking to me, he's talking to y'all. I just couldn't hear you, but he heard you. He said, get rid of harsh words and slander. That's cutting folks in half. As well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. The fifth chapter, verse one, imitate God. Therefore, what? In everything you do, because you are his dear children, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ, Watch this. He loved us and he offered himself as a sacrifice. That means something had to die. I had to give up what I wanted for the interest of someone else. I couldn't be selfish. I had to be selfless, uh, which is a pleasing aroma to God. You see that? I'm going to read one more verse. I want to drop down to Ephesians 5, 18. I'm gonna say, this verse is going to say something. Please don't go wild with it. Please don't go wild with it. Let's go down to Ephesians 5, 18. It says, don't be drunk with wine. It does not say don't drink any wine. It says don't be consumed or controlled or unable to function properly, Sister Mo, with wine. But it says be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. We're going to stop right there. Now check this out. 
We started this series called The Love <clears throat> Project. Project in the noun uh, uh, form of the word is an individual or collaborative enterprise that is carefully planned and designed to achieve a particular aim, goal, or purpose. It is a proposed or planned undertaking. In the uh, 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 verb sense of the word, it is, a, a, it is an estimate or a forecast of something. It is the projection of something. It is speaking right now where we are headed. What am I saying here? I may not be as loving as I should be, but according to Jesus in Mark 12, 28, he says, you shall love me with all your heart. You shall love me with all your mind. You shall love me with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. What am I saying here? Don't throw yourself in the trash because you are not where God wants you to be. We are not perfect, but we are a project that's in the process of becoming like God. I'm going to say it again. I am not perfect. So the parents, you're beautiful, babe, but you are not perfect. You are a project. You are an assignment. You are, listen, you are on the way, but you haven't arrived yet. And the beautiful thing about being on the way, Sister Ebony, is it ought to make us humble. It ought to make us be gracious. And it ought to make us put us in a place to take it easy on others. I'm not where I should be. You may be better in a certain area, but watch this here. There's an area that I'm doing well in, so therefore I need you. The area that you're doing great in, I'm poor in. But if two people can become one, we'll be a complete package. Can't nobody point their finger at me. Don't put me down because you got me here. But oh, baby, I got you somewhere else. So I am a project in the process of becoming like Jesus. Watch this here. We always say we ought to be Christ-like. First of all, let me just stop right here and tell you that when the Bible says be like Christ, it means to be perfect. I'm going to just tell you, it says, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. When the Bible says be Christ-like, it means to be perfect because Christ is perfect. Watch me here. You and I cannot be like Christ in our own strength. That's why we've got to have the power of God helping us to become like Christ. It is impossible to have an amazing marriage without the God who created marriage. Oh, I'm talking good. How do you have power to forgive others the way God has forgiven you without the help of God? That's why we get tired. Because we're trying to do only, in our strength, only what God has the power to do. I can't forgive you. Watch this here. Watch this here. We can fake forgiveness. Oh, I'm talking real good. And when they do something again, it takes us back to that same place that we were work. Oh, as long as I don't see you. Uh, 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 Sister Bill. <laughs> then I won't go back to that place. So out of sight, out of mind. I don't go there. But when I see you again and it takes me back to where I was, then I have not forgiven you because then watch this here. As long as nothing has stirred stuff up in me, I can think like I've forgiven you. I can think like we are cool. But if it takes you back to a certain day, a certain attitude comes on you. You have not forgiven me. You have swept that thing under the rug because you have tried. I have tried to deal with an issue that only God has enabled me or willing to enable me to deal with. That's why I need grace. I need help. I need strength because I cannot do this life without God. It is impossible. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to wear yourself out. So I need God to love you the way God loves me. It's an elevated love. It's an elevated forgiveness. Oh, I'm talking real good. So we talked about loving our families. This is a project. I'm on the way. When we first looked at this property, all you saw was dirt. Watch this here. When it gets wet, it gets muddy. It gets messy. 
but it was still a project. What do we have to go by to see this? We had an architect draw up designs. And in order to keep me encouraged, Sister Ebony, I had to go back to the architectural design. Because only looking at this dirt, we got discouraged. We were supposed to be coming over here on Sundays after two, between two and four. But I was antsy. I wanted to see it happen sooner than it could. It took time. It's going to take time for you to become what God says you will be. But because God said you will be, you will be. Yeah, yeah. It's God. It's God's doing. Being confident of this very thing. He, God, that began a good work in me, will perform it until the day of Jesus. It's a good work. It's a guaranteed work. What God says about me will happen. It's a project. Take the pressure off your back. You couldn't fix yourself. You couldn't change your life. You couldn't make yourself up. But God can. Oh, I'm talking better than you're saying, amen. amen. I'm not tripping off of you because God is, God will make it happen. If it's the last thing he does, if it kills him, and it killed him to make you who He who he's called to be, it killed the very son of God. I, if God is for me, uh, let, let, boss, let, lady boss, if, that, that, is that just, <laughs> if God, if God, if God is for me, yeah, yeah, God's got my back. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm a project. That's right. I'm going to be all that. Mm -hmm. And all that is looking like Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a project, a love mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says, imitate God. Can we just talk today? Who is it that you're imitating? The word in the Greek is memetes. It's memetes. Y'all didn't know I could speak another language. Yeah, 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 I can. It means to mimic. It means to impersonate. It means to duplicate. And watch me here. We are all mimicking somebody. We are all duplicating somebody. We are all impersonating somebody. Watch me here. I find my wife sounding like me. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. Wait a minute. Am I listening to myself? Am I losing? No, because we spend time. There's something about that phrase that she likes or she's trying to make a point, whatever. There's things that I do because we are all a product of our environment. Watch me here. The good stuff that come out your environment. The, the bad stuff that come out of your environment. You are a product of your environment. The text says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, you are his dear children. His children. Watch this here. Think about this. There was a writer that talked about the fact that we are a product of our environment. I want to show you something. Now, now considering this, watch this here. Uh, Gavin McCormick on March 3rd, that was your birthday two years ago, right? 2019 says this, children are a product of their environment. They love to imitate those around them, especially their parents and their teachers. What we wish to see in our children we should practice ourselves. Model the behavior you wish to view in your child. What has worked for you is not work for the child. To be like mom or dad is the dream of many children. Oh, I'm talking good. We must remember that just because they can't respond to us, this is heavy, doesn't mean they don't understand. They understand a lot more than we think, and we need to think very carefully about what they are seeing. Parents. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm hitting you hard today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to myself, and, and I'm not going to crack myself without cracking you. <laughs> Set the foundations of kindness, care, respect, equality.
equality, independence, and persistence, and your child will grow to be able to take on any of the challenges the world may throw at them. It is natural for children to be like their parents. They have their parents' nature, and they instinctively imitate their parents' actions and behavior. What do your kids see? When they start acting out of what they see, stop getting mad at them. Get, at, get mad at yourself. So Paul says, imitate God as dear children. Who are you imitating? When people go in on you, when they, when they go OFF, what are you showing them? You have the power to either show them God or you have the power to show them yourself. Uh, I, I, I submit to you today that if you show them yourself, you might get fired off your job. You, you might be in jail because, or, or you might get, you might stop saying, it, it's not really safe to show them you. Show them the God that is in you. It's dangerous to show me. You really don't want to see me. Am I right, Brother Jewel? Because I, I, I can get an attitude. I, I, I can just, I can, I'm sharp with my tongue. I, I'm quick with my tongue. I will go in. I will go OFF. I will be condescending. So I'd rather you see the Jesus in me, more of him and less of me. All of him and none of me. Because if you get me, you probably won't talk to me. Too much longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know me better than you know me. I don't think it's good for you to see me. We want to see God, not you. So we are to imitate God as dear children. You say, how do I imitate God? How do I be perfect like God? Well, because you have the nature of God. See, adoption in our day and time is only to give the child, their name. But in God's perspective, we get the name and the nature. I have the ability to act like Christ because I have the nature of Christ on the inside. I believe Colossians says that we are in Christ and Christ is in me. This is the mystery that God lives in me. Why is it that I, sometimes I act like Christ and sometimes I don't? Why is it that Peter says something good and then the next minute Jesus has to rebuke him? Because we move, we vacillate. And depending on what it is, we'll go with God and then like, I'm taking this no more. I'm not doing it no more. Say one more thing. I got something for you. And that's what messes it all up. The, the Lord said, don't say nothing. Be quiet. And you say that last thing and your husband be like, man, I'm done with you. <laughs> All you have to do is be quiet. I don't feel like being quiet. <laughs> Use the God. Let the God in you work. Our light is to shine out. We've got God on the inside. Greater is God in me than anything that is in the world. Don't tell me you can't help it. You don't want to. Oh yeah, I'm talking real good. I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't listen. My, listen, can I just be real? Uh, I'm like, Dave, what we got for dessert tonight? I'm not gonna tell y'all what she said. That's between us. I ain't gonna go there. When she said I got some dessert, I'm like, can I, I want some chips and I want some peanut M and M's. And I, she gave me a little bit of bag because she tried to watch my way. I thought I was supposed to watch it. And I said, can I get some more? She was like, that's enough. But I don't want just enough. I want some more. You, are you hearing me? Listen, so we are to mimic God. We are to, which we are to live a life filled with love. What's coming out of you is the only thing that you are filled with. When pressure comes on, when people go in and go off, it is like the idea of a pot that's filled. If you bump a pot of rice, it's already bubbling and boiling and all that. Only thing that's going to come out that rice is what's on the inside. So if ugly come out, ugly is in. I can't stand a, I can't stand a beautiful woman with an ugly attitude. Just saying what I'm saying. Uh, so listen. The Apostle Paul gives us some very key essential truths that will work effectively in every relationship that we have. Every relationship that we have. Relationships with our parents. It's a love project. With our mates. 
with our children, with our siblings, with our co-workers, and even with our enemies. We got enemies. Sometimes they get the best of us. And a lot of times we want to get the best of them. <laughs> oh, I got some. I, oh, I got some for you. Listen, watch this here. This is important. Whether we want to accept it or not, or rather whether we believe it or not, we have a lot of unacknowledged relationships. Listen, 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 listen. What is a relationship? Can we define what a relationship is? I think we need to define that. A relationship is any type of interaction, how we relate or correspond. That means if I go and the barber cut my hairline further than I asked him, why y'all think I'm bald? I didn't tell you to cut my hairline back here. Now I'm upset. I, that's the way we relate it. It's, a, it's an unacknowledged relationship. What am I saying here? How we work with each other. How we deal with each other. Listen, I want us to define a relationship in a now is the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected. Are connected. Or the state of being connected. It, in the, it's, this, it's the way in which two or more people or organizations regard and behave toward each other. We have a, un, a lot of unacknowledged relationships. All I was going down there was asking for extra bacon, apple with bacon, and y'all gonna give me a, a, a turkey bacon? I don't want turkey bacon. I want apple with bacon. That's a relation. That's how we relate and correspond to each other. But because we don't see it as a vital uh, interaction, we treat people bad all the time. That's a relationship. We have to be careful how we handle each other. That is your neighbor. We're dealing with the love project. And, and, and I know people say, this, like, wait a minute, God, wait, wait, wait. If they would have did this, I would have did that. What people do ain't your daggone business. I, I'm, that's what I said. I meant that. How other people handle you don't have nothing to do with you. It's how you treat them. If you worry about you, if you are right, if you change, then everything else will change. You are not responsible for other people. I know you're in your mind, you're going to say this, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not about to be responsible for what I do. No, yes, you are responsible for what you do. Yeah, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are. So listen, we have a lot of unacknowledged relationships, right? In Mark 12, 28 through 31, Jesus says we're to love our God, with all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, and the second commandment, love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Wait a minute, there you go, God asking me to do something that's kind of hard. Let me say, not hard, it's impossible. Because any, anybody, how many of you really love your neighbor the way you love yourself? Think about that. Y'all don't even love y'all husbands the way you love yourself. We so... We shall love them, or we shall love, we don't. I hook, I'll be honest with you, I hook myself up. I'm already trying to get the new, I'm already trying to get a new iPad. Listen, this one has been working according to the will of God. It's been tripping. I'm like, okay, cool. It has been messing up. I already got my mind set on the new, I'm going to get me a new, look, I'm going to get me one. I promise you I'm going to get me one. I already want some new vans. I got my shelf already lined up with the vans. My nephew was like, oh, your little, your, 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 your little Phoenix already, he got way more vans. Then you're going to pump me up. You're going to make me competitive. Oh, I got to get more vans. I'm going to get me some more vans. Jesus says we're to love each other the way we look out for ourselves. Prefer yourself. Prefer them. He said, Jesus says, keep that same energy that you got toward yourself and flip it around somebody. Can somebody else get the hookup? Can you bless somebody else with a steak? Can you hook somebody else? What would the world be like if you looked out for the others the way you look out for yourself? And watch this here. I'm getting off all script. If I would be kind to others, gracious to others, forgiving others, what is forgiveness? Letting them go, cutting the string, I'm not holding you hostage. Do you know, God says when you treat people like that, even though they did you dirty, when you get in the vine, I'm going to hook you up to the merciful. I'll be merciful. In essence, what it is, is God says it's, it, it's, a, it's a financial thing. They have, a, they have a, a, a way to invest money for my business folks in here. Uh, uh, um, 
where you can put, if you, it used to be if you could put 100 grand in the bank and let it sit, at some point, you can live off the interest and never touch the principal. Watch this here. If I forgive you, Sister Ebony, cut the string and let you go. If I be kind to you, Sister Paris, when you did me wrong, if I be merciful, if I, if I prefer you, I'm setting up to where God says, if you love them, I'm going to love you. If you've been merciful to them, I'm going to be merciful with you. We all get in a situation where we need to hook up, where we need a pass. And yeah. God said, if you give people a pass, I'm going to give you a pass. We all, because we all make mistakes, we're going to get in a situation where I need a pass. Mm -hmm. I need to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But if I don't forgive, I heard this, I, this the, the, the Lord just told me this. He said, if you don't forgive others, mm -hmm. I won't forgive you. God is a cold piece of work. Mm -hmm. He said, if you don't forgive others, I won't forgive. You want grace? Give it. You want love? Give it. Not because they deserve it. You don't want to go by deserve. Because if we went by that, none of us should be loved. You know what I told the Lord the other, uh, the, uh, a couple mornings ago, Brother Dino, I, I, went, I, went, I, went in, I went in the closet. I told the Lord, I said, what am I doing here? <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to get this house. What am I doing here? I don't deserve the wife I got. I don't deserve to be alive. You know, I, I could have been dead. I should have been dead. I would have been dead. Got family to die from COVID. I got it. Not today, I don't. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, let me watch how I talk. I, 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 I had it. <laughs> yeah. This one, this one. 2022. 20, I had it, but I made it through. I didn't deserve to make it through it, but God. That's why I ought to extend grace. Look, he hooked me up. I know people that I grew up with. Mom died. She was 56. The daughter died, and she was 34 within two weeks. Oh, but God, but God, but God, he showed me grace. And if I receive grace, all to give. What would the world be like? Stop looking at people's mistakes. My mama said this. We're more harder on the sinner than God is. Mm -hmm. God said, I love to forgive. God said, I, he says, love like I love. Why are we giving people a hard time as if we are perfect? Mm -hmm. Nobody in here is perfect. Your mama ain't perfect. Your daddy ain't perfect. And it will never be for I ain't perfect, but it's a process of progress. And when I see him, I will be like him. It's a love project. So who is it that's my neighbor? Anybody I deal with. So we have a lot of unacknowledged relationships. We have to be careful how we handle people. Because those people got people. And those people got people. If I was treating them bad, what if their people come back? That, 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 that'd be good. That'd be bad. But imagine if I treated everybody good with the love of God. The Bible says, do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. If I would love people and not look down on people, and I let me tell, let me tell, I just heard it in my spirit. God can save. God can change. God can deliver. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a liar. I don't care if you're a drug dealer. I don't care if you're a murderer. It's a love project. If we would give, if we would give the love that we receive, that's what changes people. Love people the way God loves you. The Bible says in Ephesians four and thirty two. Be tender-hearted. You know what that means? Be easygoing. Mm -hmm. Don't be a jerk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm a jerk. 
But I'm not as much as I'm not. I'm not. I, I used. I used to be a real jerk for real. But but I'm being delivered. I'm being sister unique. <laughs> sister unique. I'm being delivered. I'm being delivered. But that's what the Bible says. Right, yeah. Listen, listen. Can people say about you that you're easy going? Be easy going. Be a hookup. Be kind. Be tender. Be compassionate. Be tender hearted. Can you put yourselves in the shoes of another person? If you maybe if you could put yourselves in their shoes for the moment, Brother Dino, you probably could see why they did what they did. If I was in the same situation, uh, maybe I would have to do it. I'm trying to just pay my mortgage. I'm, I'm trying to pay my rent because my kids don't need to be on the streets. Maybe if you could put yourselves in their shoes for just a moment, you could see why they did what they did, and you can empathize and sympathize instead of being condescending, judgmental, and critical. And watch me here all on Instagram, on TikTok, whatever, whoever, wherever. God does not like folks that are criticizers. He says, I hate that stuff. <laughs> God don't like a criticizer. What, what would our church, what would church beyond walls be if we would love people like they are? It's a love project. And lead them by our example and leave them in God's hands. Tell a man said, take me to the king. Love them as they are. Lead them by our examples and let God change them. It's a love project. This church would have no room if we would just love people. Love young people. Love drug dealers. Oh, I'm, I'm moving by the Spirit, the Spirit of God. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm, the Spirit of God is in me right now. Listen, love, love prostitutes. Watch me here. Love the lesbian. Love the homosexual. Love, love, the, love the prostitute. Do you know that a prostitute was in the lineage of Jesus? Rahab the harlot was a prostitute, but by faith she hid the spies, and she is in the book of Hebrews that Rahab was justified by faith. But then, watch this here. When you become justified, it's a declaration. But God says, I'm going to make what I said about you a reality in your your life. You will love me with all your heart. You will love me with all your mind. You will love me with all your strength. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. If we would just love people without conditions. That's what we call unconditional love. How about I read, I read some. How about we start uh, listen, I am I'm going to push this thing to Jesus come back. How about we start today? Doing good to folks with nothing expected in return. You don't even have to know my name. Jesus, this man, this rich, uh, this expert says, who is my neighbor? If you go to Luke 10, 25, Jesus tells a parable. But if we look at 10, 29, the man wanted to justify, that's Luke 10, 29. We're going to end it right here. He wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man went traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. That's Luke 10 and 30. And he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him, Brother Samaj, of his clothes, beat him up, Brother Dino, and left him half dead, beside the road. Look at the people that walked by him. They saw him walk by him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is the ones that left him for dead? These bandits. But who is the ones that should have fixed the situation? The church. Look at verse 31. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he went to the other side. Wow. What? And passed him Wait a minute. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him. He was beat, bleeding, half dead. He looked at the cat. He looked, he looked at him and passed by. 
on the other side. But then a despised Samaritan, that's a half Jew, a half breed, the ones they call a dog. When he saw the man, he felt compassion on him. Didn't Paul just say, be tenderhearted, be compassionate? Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey. He put him in his own Cadillac, his own Brentwood. He put him in his own Audi Q5. He put him in his own Honda Accord Sport. He put him in his own brand new 2022 Durango. He put him in his own Hyundai Palisade. He put him in his own Altima and took him to Howard Johnson. <laughs> took him to the guest inn where they got breakfast, not continental breakfast. Give him some of them sausage and bacons and that good stuff with some water. He took him there and he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two coins, which was about $150. Watch this, telling him, take care of this man. And if his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I am here. Jesus said, now which of these three uh, would you say was his neighbor? They said the one has shown him mercy. Watch this here. We are to be a help to whomever, whenever, however we possibly can. Sometimes it's a listening ear. <laughs> Sometimes it's an encouraging word. Sometimes it's a helping hand. Sometimes it's a business referral. Sometimes let's go to lunch and it's my treat. Are we going? Are we going to go to 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 the steakhouse? Or are we we going we going to go to the Brazil house? It's my treat. It's not about the money. It's about the relationship. Sometimes it's a simple phone call, checking in and a check it on. Sometimes it's a, I'm praying for you, or how can I pray for you? The songwriter uh, Reverend Milton Brunson, which I love, says, "Lord, I'm available to you." You gave me my hands to reach out to man, to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave me my ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of sinners, but can I wipe away their tears? You gave me my voice to speak your word, to sing all your praises to those who never heard. But with my eye, I can see a need for more availability. I've seen the hearts that have been broken. Lord, I'm available to you. It's a love project. Gandhi said this. I have no problem with Jesus. I have a problem with some of his followers. They name the name of Christ. But they're prideful. They talk about how forgiving God has been to them, but they can't forgive nobody. God hooked me up, but they can't hook nobody up. Condescending, critical, competitive, petty. Imagine if we love people the way God loved us to change. Forgive them the way you have been forgiven. We're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. We don't want to push it too hard. The love project. The love project. The love project. Make somebody's life better today. Do one thing. Just one thing. Take them a hot meal. Call and check on somebody. Watch this here. Call and check on somebody to get on your nerves. Everybody about to call the pastor. You get on my nerves. Every time you preach, you get on my nerves. What? Hey, what's up? You, you, you want to go out there? Yeah, I want to go out there. You want to pay for my phone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> can I roll in your car? Listen, can you turn the, the, the cooling seats on so when it's hot? I'm just, but listen, do good. Treat, give grace. My nephew. I ain't going to lie. This dude be hooking up people like, bro, you going to hook everybody up? He hook everybody up. Everybody. He was like, hey, we was having dinner. He was like, hey, uncle, 
you know, such and such. I can't name him because he comes to church sometimes. He's like, oh, for real, you talking about me at church? <laughs> he was like, hey, can you hook him up? So I'm like, oh, I was like, I kind of took a little drug my feet. My wife was like, baby, he, he saw you can answer real quick. So I hooked him up. I hooked his friend up. I made him, I made some cheesy macaroni and cheese. That, it was good. I ain't gonna lie. It was cheesy, buttery. With the eggs, and you know what I'm saying? I can't give you my signature because then you're going to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I hooked him up. He was like, oh, he don't want no, he don't want no ribs. He, he just want, so I hooked him up with the, the homemade uh, uh, sweet, the, uh, yams, the macaroni and cheese, and I made some honey butter, uh, honey butter biscuits. Lightly toasted. <laughs> look, you, you cut the middle of the biscuit, and you put like a big wedge of butter up in there, Get it all good, and you just you just run the honey on it oh, like wow. that. <laughs> that dude tore that stuff up. But my nephew be hooking people up. What if he gets in a situation <laughs> where he needs somebody? See, we have to realize this. We have to realize this. Maybe the person that I did wrong or right, I may never see them again, boss lady. <laughs> but you know who I'm running into? God. Oh, I'm talking good. I'm running into God, Sister Unique. I may never see that guy at the dealership. I may never see that, that lady at, that was at the restaurant. I did them dirty. I may never see them again. But I'm running into God. And what God says, when you do them good, you may never see them again. But you're going to see me again. And if you hook them up, I'll hook you up. I'm running into God, Brother Dino. Do good. Don't matter how they are. It don't matter what they look like. Because I'm running into God again. And he said, remember how you didn't help them? How you overlooked them? How you mistreated them? How you gave them a hard time? God said, I'm big bad. I talk big because I can back it up. And God said, how you did them is how I'm going to do you. But watch this here. You can change it today. If you was a hater, you can change it. If you was hard and severe and harsh, you can change the game today. I have decided every time I get up, I decide every day to be better than I was yesterday because I'm a project. I'm a project. I'm God's project. And with the grace of God, I can do better today than I did yet. You can leave out of this room doing better today than you did a few minutes ago. And you got to take the attitude of Sister Paris. Hey, I messed up. That was an hour ago. I'm, you know what my daughter said? I messed up an hour ago. And she and you try to bring up what she did an hour ago. You know what she tell us? Oh, that's the past. <laughs> oh, that's the past. That's how you got to live your life. That's the past. I messed up. But today I'm going to be better. Today I'm going to be greater. Today I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to forgive you a little more. I'm going to love you a little more. Because I'm a project of God. I'm God's assignment. I'm God's problem. And watch this here. Whatever's going on in your life, God said, I'll make you better. I'll I'll build you. I'll hook you up. You will be better today. Better tomorrow. Greater is later. One day at a time. One individual at a time. And watch this world change. Be the change. It's a love project. Praise God. Praise God for your presence. We are done. We won't be labor the point. Because they're like, Pastor, I, I just forgave you. Now I'm going to have to forgive you again. It's the Super Bowl Sunday. It's Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl. My ribs is in the oven. Uh, uh, my, 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 you know what I'm saying? They, they, my greens or whatever. And my wings and things and all whatever y'all do. I'm going to die. And eat all your stuff. <laughs> Listen, I love you. I'm praying for you. Uh, 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 we want to invite you to this God that will change your life, that will change your life. Before we go, before we go, we want to uh, uh, invite you to be a member of this great body. We are headed somewhere. Great things are on the way. Great things are on the way. We need you and you need us and together we can do God's work. We, can, we cannot do it alone. We cannot. Everybody here is valuable. Everybody is here that is here is necessary. Watch this. There's people that you can reach I can never reach. But if we work together and not fight one another, we can, this love project will work. And we want to invite you to be a blessing and, uh, and sow into this body. You can do so several different ways. Our Cash App platform, which is Dollar Sign Church Beyond Walls, 
via Venmo at Church Beyond Walls, and you can do so pay a pop, pay a pal, pay a pal <laughs> to 951-522-2125. And then we want you, to, we want to invite you, last but not least, to follow us on social media. Um, if you tap in to www.churchbeyond.org, you can find us on all these different platforms. We love you and we are praying for you and we will see you again the same time next week. Praise